Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on using a solver in Microsoft Excel. My name is Renee Clark. Keep in mind that in your instance of Excel, solver may not yet be available. To check, go to the data ribbon and look in the analysis group towards the right side of the data ribbon for solver. If you don't see it, you'll need to go back to File and then under File, select Options. And at that point under Excel Options, you'll want to select the Add-ins. Go down here to Manage Excel Add-ins, click Go, and another pop-up box will come up allowing you to check the box next to the Solver Add-in. Click OK. Then when you come back to the Data Ribbon, go to the Analysis group, you should now see Solver listed. When using Solver, we use Solver because we need to solve some type of management problem or make a decision, and it requires perhaps a lot of what-if analysis to get there. Rather than using trial and error, when we have a spreadsheet set up to give us answers to our trial and error, we can use Microsoft Excel's Solver models. When you open up Solver Parameters dialog box in Excel, you will need to set your set objective cell. So the objective cell is going to be what cell you want to see the end result in for whichever scenario you're looking at. I'm going to use an example where the objective cell will be the optimal net income because we're going to look at a solution for optimal product mix in order to maximize the net income. Now, it does not always need to be maximized. It could be minimized or it could be set to a particular value. So you can also use this when looking for break even. You will also need to have changing variable cells defined to use Solver. These are the cells that you're want to see changed in order to get to your objective. In the example I'll be using, we'll be looking at how many thousands of widgets can be made in the various finishes to get to the correct product mix to maximize our net income. We'll start by entering the cell reference for the objective cell and the changing variable cells, deciding whether we want the maximized, minimized, or set to a particular value. You do not need to use constraints initially, but you can. And in most business situations, you will find that there are always some type of constraint involved. You will probably be setting up constraints. You can add, change, delete, reset, etc. your constraints. First off, you probably need to think about, well, what is a constraint? There is some type of limitation on your solution that you're trying to find. In our example, the solution will be involve using inventory of available parts to create the amount of widgets that can be sold or produced. And in most businesses, there are often multiple constraints. Here's what your Add a Constraint dialog box looks like. So when you're entering a constraint, you enter the cell reference of the item that has the constraint then you're going to select the type of constraint. It can be greater than or equal to, equal to, less than or equal to. It can be an integer, a binary, or it has to be different. Then last, you're going to add the constraint value itself if it's going to be greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, etc. Then you simply click OK. You're going to repeat that for as many constraints as you need. And once you have your constraints in place, you're ready to run Solver to find the optimum solution. Next, I'd like to show you a brief demonstration of me creating a Solver solution and entering constraints. So please watch this short video clip. In this Widgets Are Us example, we have a company that makes white, bronze, silver, and gold widgets. They are currently making 2,012 white, 980 bronze, 256 silver, and 10 gold. Here are the price per thousand, revenue per thousand, material cost per thousand, manufacturing cost per thousand. In this current situation, 
Their total units sold is 3258 Here's their revenue, their material costs, manufacturing costs, fixed expenses, and their net income. You can also see the parts required for each thousand here per type of widget as well as the parts available and used in the current so that we can see the remaining. So we have all of this information. We're now ready to run Solver. In this case, we would like net income in H8 to be maximized. The variables that can change are these optimal product mix amounts for white, bronze, silver, and gold. And I've also configured several constraints. So let's walk through this. This is setting up so that our amount of each product has to be at least 29,000 of units. So it has to be greater than or equal to 29. I've also set so that the amount thousands of widgets must be an integer. You can't make a partial thousand because widgets are sold only in thousands. We have set a constraint on the total number of widgets produced at 3,258 thousands of widgets. And we're also setting a constraint on the parts available over here in the amount of remaining inventory for parts, which is in cells J12 through J25, that must be greater than or equal to zero. In other words, our solution must be built on available parts. It cannot be created with the assumption we will buy more parts. If I needed to add another one, I would simply come out to add, select whatever the constraint was related to. Maybe I was going to create it off of available instead and it has to be less than or equal to that, and so on. So all of those can be built here. Now I'm ready to solve, so I simply click on the Solve, and it will bring up my solution, and it's going to say a solution was found. I can now keep this and return to the Solver Parameters box. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go ahead and close that and let's go look at my solution. So here you can see in this range here the optimal solution still creating only 3,258 will give us an increase in net income of this amount. Now here's an additional consideration that a constraint may be necessary. In the past we were only making 10 gold and now this constraint or this solution is recognizing that to optimize net income we should be making 175. You can see that it's moving away from the less expensive white and into the silver and gold. So as a business manager, you may need to consider adding another constraint because do you have the market to sell more gold and silver at these higher prices? Alright, that's a very simple solver problem. Please move forward to the next set of lectures. More of my lectures can be found on YouTube by searching for Renee K. Clark and then subscribing to my channel. You will find a variety of Excel lectures available as well as selected other lectures.